Recording stopped. Now it's uh, the moment of the, the third panel of uh, the, the, this uh, morning. Um, the topic is enterprises, technology, and the service for the smart city platform and solution for UAM. And I call to come uh, here um, Alessandro Cardi, senior uh, advisor del distretto tecnologico aerospaziale. Prego, Alessandro. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. It's, it's, it's still morning <laughs> in, our, in our culture. So uh, I do thank you for your strength because this is the more challenging uh, panel because the, the timing <laughs> is really um, <laughs> challenging. So I, I will try to be very uh, stick to the point and, and sharp with the, with the, the uh, uh, let's say my introductory uh, note and uh, also the questions in order to uh, speed up the, the panel, not losing any information, of course, because we, we, are, we, we stay here in order to hear each other, to learn from each other's experience, and then the, we, we need a, a bit of time to do this. So I will call on, on, the, on, on, the, on the floor. Uh, uh, my, my speakers in, uh, in, a, uh, in, a, in a few moments. Let me only introduce the, uh, the scenario where we say, now we, we, in this panel, we will speak about mainly platform and mainly of solutions for UAM. Uh, is, a, is a, let's say, a different point of view or different uh, uh, sides, a different angle from the previous panel about technology. So there are still industry dominating the scene, uh, either the, the, the industry, uh, the manufacturer on the manufacturing side, the, from the service side, from the uh, operation side. So we have all the representation of the, of the, of the uh, different uh, in, uh, kind of industry involved in, in this game. Uh, let me uh, uh, go for a while in uh, uh, two, uh, let's say, two pills of knowledge, let's say, two pills of information. One is uh, that when we speak about uh, drones or drone activity or drone domain, we're speaking about digitalization because the only way, the only way to work, to fly, to, to fly together to, and to fly in the way uh, drones like to, f to, to, f to fly is to digitalize, it is to live in a digitalized world. So technology is the key of success. There's the, no chance uh, from, 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 this, from this approach. So this technology is very important, is, uh, is the key of success, and, uh, and we are dedicating a lot of efforts on this. We have seen the, the, the previous panel, but I will add an information about the, the, so is a, uh, a mature information, it's not, uh, it's not uh, something coming a few days ago, and uh, that ANAC, the, the Civil Aviation Authority in Italy, has published last year uh, the national roadmap for the implementation of UAM, of, for AAM uh, uh, activities. It, 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 doesn't made, it, it didn't made alone. It is made with the highly valuable uh, contribution from industry. The main actors in Italy have participated, attended, the, and contributed to, the, to this uh, roadmap in order to have, uh, uh, let's say, a pragmatic, uh, real uh, roadmap and real identification of the gaps. The roadmap identifies uh, a number of uh, technological gaps and trying to identify also the level of maturity uh, that the, the, the technologies is offering at a given moment. Then more and more we, we feel the technological gap, we will uh, go to a, a different level of maturity and then we can scale up the service. We can provide a service more, let's say, uh, efficient or even more performing. So the, 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 this roadmap is essential for the, for, the, uh, for the affirmation and for the growth of the, of the system. And then the, uh, the industry that has contributed knows very well the value of, of having uh, 
put on the, on, uh, on the sheet and identified, uh, I, I think to remember, more than 54 or more than 55 technological gaps to be filled in order to have a mature, uh, let's say, uh, sector in order for safety and for performance uh, of, of the activities. So this is important and now we, we will uh, touch this subject with, uh, with the, my speakers that I invite on, on the floor. Please, uh, you may ask for uh, Michael Hart uh, from Boeing to, to come to join me and uh, is, uh, is working in the, uh, in, in the field of autonomy technologies research uh, and research in Europe from Boeing Europe. Please take, take your seat. Then uh, uh, Carlo Tursi from Urban V, and uh, is uh, dedicated to he's dedicated to the infrastructuring, the uh, the, the, the sector. Uh, uh, Federico Bus uh, is an operational engineer of uh, uh, Flying Basket, uh, well, well established operator, and the other well established operator we have in the top view. And I, I ask uh, Alberto Menella to join me, please. Uh, this is uh, the uh, innovation manager. Uh, we also have uh, uh, Laura Esposito, the manager of R RPS unit in Telespazio, one of the uh, major contributors for our roadmap, so <laughs> is, uh, is a way to, to test wh what, what we are doing. And uh, Alan uh, Abelslon from, yeah, here he is, please join me. Thank you. Uh, from uh, uh, Highlander, Israeli. So, uh, I, I, will, uh, I will try to be, as I promised, uh, very, uh, quite, uh, very sharp and, uh, and tick, uh, stick to the point in order to uh, manage uh, uh, at the best way, in the best way, our time. So this is a very, very uh, a limited resource today. So uh, I will make a first round of questions so to, to our speakers, and it will be the same, more or less, because there are different, different uh, let's say, approaches, different point of view, different angles to uh, uh, approach solutions for UAM. And I will start with uh, Michael, Michael Hart, uh, you, Boeing, uh, in order to ask you, uh, what is your contribution in terms of ATM solution today, and what, what is in, in uh, just in this moment, uh, in, in, on the way, for the tomorrow uh, solutions that you are envisaged, your company is envisaged, and, and you can tell us today. Okay. Hello? Hello? Please change, change the mic. <laughs> Maybe now. Okay. Yes, hello? Yeah. Yeah, um, our activities in, in this area of advanced air mobility uh, center around autonomy and, well, urban air taxis, which, is, which is, uh, falls within the line of products that we, that we promote. And um, so we've, we've been working on a number of uh, projects recently, large projects within a region of, uh, in Galicia, since, well, I'm in, located in Spain, and there they have a region similar to this one in which they are actively promoting the, the development of uh, these types of advanced air mobility technologies. And there we're looking in, um, primarily we had uh, a large project dedicated to contingency management. That's an area which is, we believe, um, critical in order to enable a, a safe integration of these technologies into the, into the airspace. And now, well, we, we also have a couple large projects. Another large project that's completing now is one called uh, USKY, which is a high fidelity, uh, broadly encompassing um, use space simulation environment. We believe that's also a, can be a very important tool for verification and validation of the of the different uh, operations and platforms that we, what we all want to see uh, eventually integrated into our skies. And then, um, and then finally we have a, uh, also another very ambitious project which we, we should hope to kick off uh, next year, which will be the, the construction of a vertiport and uh, the associated technologies in order to, um, well, um, supply this operational area, it's a complex new type of operational area for 
these for the traffic you know associated with advanced air mobility and for in particular these last two uh, projects we do hope to connect on a European scale European wide to exchange experiences because I think it's also a, a critical element for for advancing in this area is to have a, um, a lot of exchange between the different participating entities so that's a quick summary Yes, o only only one question. Uh, just to, uh, if you can uh, give some more information, Boeing, uh, is, uh, we know, is a big player, and an, as any big player, they they uh, uh, let's say they think and they act uh, as a in a global approach. Yeah. They 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 go. He's not only a manufacturer of aircraft, <laughs> so they don't, they not only manufacture drones or uh, or aircraft in in general sense, but also think take care of. Uh, operations, uh, flight, uh, and infrastructure, so we know. But can you just spend a few words about the, 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 the timing of the project, because you're well involved in the human transportation with the uh, air, aero taxi, that is the most challenging uh, activity for, for, with, with drones. Well, uh, I'm, I'm convinced that within this, say, the, this decade, mm -hmm. we're going to see uh, urban air taxis. Um, Boeing has taken the well, the mic. Okay, yeah, Boeing has um, is taking the more ambitious approach of of directly um, say um, choosing to have autonomous operations, not with like a pilot on board initially. It's a it's a questionable approach, but I believe it's a you know it's a uh, it certainly has. A, uh, good arguments for taking this approach. So it's, um, yeah. It, but in either case, uh, as you say, the, the, the regulations, the, the integration, all these elements are, are is a big challenge. And uh, that's something we are spending a lot of time and dedication and in looking into making sure primarily that the business can be profitable. So, and in, in order for that to, to happen, there has to be a, there has to be taken, many things have to be taken into consideration very early on um, to make sure at least that a roadmap is in place that we, we can have autonomous operations before the end of the decade with, with people on board, right? So. <laughs> fantastic, fantastic. So, may, may I ask uh, uh, Laura, uh, what, 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 what about your uh, contribution uh, does it work? Yeah. Uh, well, we have been working mainly in two different uh, streams in the last uh, recent years. Uh, the first stream that we should see on the following slide is the services for drones. So in this basket, uh, we can imagine all those solutions that enable somehow the integration of the use space and the ATM and at the same time all the solutions that uh, allow the maturation oh thank you very much thanks that allow the the maturation of the use space uh, itself so for example connectivity and navigation solutions and uh, the awareness layer and uh, at the same time the harmonization between the two words manet and armanet so the common altitude reference system that you may have uh, heard about uh, with the project I Icarus. And the, the second stream we have been working on is the solution with drones. Uh, this is maybe easier to understand because we are talking about all those applications that uh, foresee end-to-end -end services for end user in which drones are used as tools or sensor to, to perform the service itself. And just to give you a perception of where we are, where, where we, are um, we have been working on a number of different vertical segments. And if we think about the, guide, the roadmap issued by ENAC, uh, we can uh, share a positive message. I don't want to go into the details of all the projects, but uh, the message is that we have been able to perform uh, a number of uh, demonstration in controlled uh, spaces. So we can say that uh, we are at uh, level one of maturity uh, in all these fields, uh, that it's really um, uh, a positive message and we really hope to look 
uh, forward for a uh, more mature level of applications in the next coming months and years. Um, if we want to give a look more in detail to the building blocks that are behind all these kind of applications, uh, we have uh, developed an integrated proposition in uh, Telespazio that is called uh, T-DROMS. Uh, it is integrated not only because we cover, let's say, different technologies, but also because we go through all the different phases of the mission. So from the planning to the execution and monitoring and to the exploitation of data. Um, let's have uh, examples, let me say, more concrete of these three phases and technologies. Uh, firstly, we have developed a software platform that is able to support uh, detailed planning of the mission in terms of uh, trajectory, availability of pilots and drones. And the same platform uh, supports the, the end user um, with the execution of the mission in terms of command and control of vehicles, and also in terms of uh, wide monitoring, in terms not only of trajectory, but also uh, of position of the drone itself, and also in terms of integrity of the navigation and communication channels. Mm, within this platform, we can integrate uh, two other pieces of the puzzle uh, that are a connectivity solution, so a hardware box, a communication box that enables both the LTE channel and the satellite channel communication. And uh, another uh, third technology we can integrate as another plug and play solution is the augmentation toolkit. So a solution that not only provides more information on the precision of the drone, but also and most importantly on the integrity of the position itself, which is another key aspect for a safe integration of the drones in the uh, ATM uh, world. Mm, finally, regarding the, let me say, the third uh, uh, phase of a mission, so the data exploitation, uh, this part is the one that is mostly dependent on the application we're talking about, because uh, according to the service, we have to use different kind of data and different algorithm to provide the end user with uh, relevant information and not only raw data. Uh, but we're covering also this area, and all the picture is based on a cloud infrastructure that is based on Fujino Teleport. And the cloud meets the highest national uh, requirements in, ter in terms of security. So it's another key aspect of our proposition. And just to make it more real and not only slide, I'd like to show you briefly a video of a recent project that is still ongoing. Uh, it uh, should be completed by the end of the year. Uh, the project is called uh, SEDGE. It's an ESA application, uh, business application project. And uh, it's a law enforcement uh, application in which we have uh, used all the integrated proposition that uh, I've showed you in the previous slide, uh, together with uh, the 5G and with other technologies provided by other partners uh, that you will see in the video. Okay, thanks. There is also the audio, if it's possible otherwise. Uh, we just see the images. Thank you, thank you, Laura. That's very interesting, and uh, uh, we see that uh, good news. We have already today uh, 
a, a level of technology allowing quite a number of uh, different operations. Then let's go on, and this is interesting to pass on, on a different angle. Let, let we see two operators, uh, or let's say mainly operators. They are not only operators, they are the very selected ones because they are, they are only, uh, or, or, uh, also a role in, uh, uh, I don't want to say manufacturing in, in, in the specific sense, but they are also capable of uh, uh, manufacture something, so they are not only pure operators. So I will ask uh, uh, Alberto Menella from Top View to, uh, to tell us what, what is the contribution from your side. Thank you, Alessandro. So, yes, you're right, basically, because uh, we started uh, as a drone manufacturer in the beginning uh, in 2013, but uh, we uh, understood that uh, we should have uh, changed a little bit our strategy. So that's why we've concentrated more on payload, more on uh, devices and transponders. So basically we are technology providers, but also system integrator and uh, US operators. So uh, our contribution actually to, and, and we participated to the definition of the use space since the beginning, because we were founded uh, uh, with uh, a project called uh, Dreams in 2016, which has been one of the, of the first SRGU project. And afterwards we had uh, Icarus uh, with, uh, with Telespazio and uh, Eurocontrol. And uh, so we tried to um, collect and exploit all the results of uh, this R&D project. And uh, one of the tangible results that uh, uh, actually uh, is, uh, let's say, in the form of uh, a UTM box, which is uh, our Polichino box that you might have seen uh, even yesterday during the demonstration that has been uh, mounted on, uh, on different drones. So uh, this box, we, we decided to start with a very simple product and uh, um, day by day, month by month, add uh, new functionalities and, and new features. So uh, this box, the first uh, prototype, uh, was uh, launched last year, and we made a, a pretty big campaign with different uh, U.S. operators, even with with uh, with um, uh, with DTA that uh, supported us in uh, in different activities and many other operators uh, in Italy. And so we were capable to collect feedback from the ground and even to understand better what were the uh, the real needs of operators, being ourselves also an operator, we know that uh, on the field it's, uh, you need something that uh, is really plug and play. You want to just switch a button and have the track on a UTM uh, uh, provider, on the U-Space service provider. So uh, together with, uh, with the flight, we um, exploiting the first ICD of the flight, so the public document where the specification of the telemetry was published, we integrated this uh, very simple product in, uh, in, uh, in, in, in the flight. Afterwards, we developed uh, uh, our own API. So in this way, uh, this device is, uh, is very simple to be integrated in uh, different UTM technology providers. And uh, uh, just uh, sharing simple telemetry information according to the uh, network remote identification uh, uh, standard. Uh, so uh, we are waiting now for the uh, upcoming regulation, 64 regulation, to be um, capable to go uh, more on, uh, uh, let's say, on an on a, on a industrialization phase and to, to, to provide a pre-series of, uh, of um, uh, I would say, uh, at least 500 uh, devices to be tested in, the, uh, in, uh, in different environments and ready, and ready for, for, for the market. Um, we also have a version of uh, this uh, Policino, uh, which is a virtual application, so it's a ground control station for drones that uh, uh, actually is uh, just compliant with the DJI drones, but uh, we uh, are planning also to extend it to additional drones in the future. So, so far at this stage, uh, uh, we started with this uh, product, and uh, thanks to different uh, uh, R&D project and different uh, um, uh, opportunities, uh, we uh, will uh, little by little add the new features and new functionalities to, to this box. So this is our contribution at, the, yeah, <laughs> at this yes. moment <laughs> to this yeah. community. Yes, thank you, thank you. Uh, just, just to uh, underline, uh, 
there will be no service that will be commercially sustainable without ma traffic management. Uh, and there will be no traffic management without tracking. So the tracking is the real uh, uh, rough basis for any kind of uh, traffic, ma tracking and, uh, traffic management in order to support any application, specifically in the urban area. So uh, I think that the, it, it is for sure the right way and is an, 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 another good news that we, we can add to the, to the messages that is coming from industry. So let, let's you oh, please. And save this uh, this light for the for, for the yes uh, yes okay this is about the future I just talked about what is available now so maybe I can spend a few words no uh, I think I, it's better better uh, to go on now okay okay After so uh, okay so um, I in, in this slide this is a, a new project that we will we'll, uh, we started uh, this month with USPA. This project is called CertiFlight, and this project also the DTA and also the city of Bari is involved in, in, uh, in the advisory board for the uh, uh, testing of this new service. So basically, starting from the box, we want to add additional services such as the legal recording service, the digital logbook, and even additional uh, um, um, uh, commercial service that might be uh, uh, needed in the future. Just to give you an example, um, uh, a service that allows uh, to certify the, the hours of flight. So considering a business case when, where a client wants to, um, wants, uh, sub wants to contract an operator for uh, making some inspections in, uh, and, and wants to pay him on the basis of, uh, of, uh, of hours of flight, uh, with this project, we uh, identified uh, um, a service that uh, we defined a service that uh, provides a, a report, uh, and our uh, work is going to, to 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 make this report with a legal value, so um, uh, the, so that uh, it, uh, the 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 report can be used for many applications, starting from business application, but even all. Uh, uh, particular use cases, uh, for instance, uh, the, in the case of the autonomous drones, there might be uh, some uh, uh, problems in the liability chain from the, let's say, the <coughs> manufacturer of the drone, the operator, and the pilot that we don't know yet if, if it's going to be still in the loop or it's going to be a fleet manager of multi-drone platforms and so on. So uh, with the, uh, this service, uh, we um, would like to uh, provide uh, an additional added value, starting from uh, the, the, the tracks provided by, um, uh, by, by our boxes uh, Policino. But we have to add additional features. One of the features is that the signal should be uh, genuine from the origin. So uh, uh, as you probably know, there's a new Galileo service called uh, uh, US and me, so the navigation uh, message authentication service that guarantees to uh, GNSS uh, compliant receiver that this uh, uh, GNSS signal is genuine by the region. And uh, uh, together with the blockchain that will uh, guarantee the storing of uh, uh, the position information and also additional information related to position, um, we can have a sort of uh, uh, um, uh, repository where everyone can access, so that can be also a sort of auditing system also for authorities to, to, um, to download the, the certified positions and also yeah. additional uh, uh, information related to those positions. And this might be very useful for many use cases. So this is what we will, uh, uh, this, this is in, in roped map that, uh, of, uh, of our boxes. Uh, and uh, um, yeah, this is a way how to uh, exploit the result of research in uh, tangible products that have uh, a, a value on the market. At least we, 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 we believe that uh, uh, operators uh, would pay for, for such a service. Okay, thank you. Wonderful. I think this is the, is the, the, the next step is essential because the certainty of the position uh, is linked with the safety in, in, in principle, because you must be certain that uh, the drone is at that point and not in another one. And this system will avoid the spoofing and uh, other, let's say, criminal uh, activities that can be 
put in place by uh, <laughs> illegal people, let's say, or some, some, something like this. So it's a, very, it's a very important step, and there will be a certified chain in the, in the, in, in the, will be in the loop. And, uh, okay, so uh, as I mentioned before, let's, let's uh, uh, hear from uh, Federico Bus' uh, fly basket, flying basket, the, the, the contribution and the experience that has been done in the field of uh, solution, at UN solution, please. Good morning, everybody. My name is uh, Federico Bus, uh, operations engineer for flying basket. I'm honored to be, to be here today representing the company. Um, I will uh, help myself uh, with a few slides and uh, with my notes to get straight to the point so that um, uh, for, the, for the important things uh, that I have to share with you. Thank you. Um, so, Flame Basket. Flame Basket is a, um, a company based in uh, Bolzano in Italy. Uh, was founded already back in 2015 by the Moroder brothers and had a very important growth uh, in the last uh, two years. Today we are more than uh, 30 talents uh, from around the world that make uh, Flame Basket a very and dynamic uh, environment uh, to work in. Now, uh, to answer your question, what uh, Flame Basket as a, as a company brings to the advanced air mobility. Uh, Flying Basket brings, brings drone cargo transportation to reality already today. In fact, uh, the drone uh, as a service for heavy payloads delivery was born uh, to address some uh, pain points of the, of the industry, of the commercial industries. Uh, for some application, in fact, the traditional means of uh, transport like, for example, uh, heavy and bulky cranes or uh, helicopters that are very noisy and polluting are not proportioned uh, to the end use. For example, for, uh, as I said, for some application, of course, like uh, transporting and mounting, I just give a few, few examples. Antennas, uh, four or five G antennas on a roof of a building, as well as solar panels, talking about sustainability, uh, like, or other applications uh, in the logistic uh, chain, like bringing food and medicine to hard to reach locations. We think about mountain, mountain shelters or uh, an island, a boat offshore. This is possible already today with, uh, with our drones, with our service, which is environmentally friendly, it's cheaper to operate and deploy, and safe, safe for the operator because it's unmanned, of course. <laughs> but also for the degree, for the, for the services, for some services that could be uh, by themselves uh, critical for, uh, for the environment that uh, we go, uh, that we operate in. Uh, so very briefly about the, the vertical integration of our company. So Flying Basket designs, produces, operate, and maintain end-to-end -end, uh, solutions, um, sorry, drones, to provide end-to-end -end solution to customers. Our vertical integration, uh, learning from our experience, then it's a, it's a good way as operators to improve uh, our product uh, and uh, always keep up to, up to pace with the emerging technology. Of course, we do a lot of things ourselves, but uh, we welcome uh, other uh, platform, like we integrate also Policino platform for some, uh, for some applications. Uh, so this uh, synergy it's uh, it's vital for uh, for us. Um, now the the product, um, as I said, the product as, as now is the service, uh, but uh, we are considering starting now to sell our system, uh, the drone, to few selected customer customers. Of course, we cannot s uh, sell this kind of drones that you probably seen it in the static uh, display in the in the front because it's quite a big machine. Uh, it's able to, you can read the specs, uh, I will not uh, go through, but uh, the main point is that it can lift up to 100 kilo payloads on top of uh, his uh, own weight, which is already 70 kilos, so it can lift more than its own weight. Um, and um, 
it's fully fully electric, so zero emissions. And uh, what is not mentioned here is how we deploy the payload, we transport and we deliver the payload through a sling uh, system, which is a metal rope attached to a remote control load hook um, attached to the center of gravity of the drone that enable us, the pilot, to transport the goods, uh, place it accur accurately uh, in, a, in a point, let's say five meters diameter uh, point, uh, looking, it, looking at it um, through the very high resolution camera, uh, giving a video to the, to the, to the operator, and uh, deploying, uh, disconnecting the, the payload, in fact, without uh, even uh, having the need of, uh, of landing at the delivery point, then coming back. Uh, yeah, this is the, um, without the need uh, of, uh, of a delivery area. So, uh, operational scenarios. Um, there are many applications, but operationally, I'm, I work in operations, I'm a drone pilot myself. Uh, the two scenarios uh, are subdivided uh, principally in, uh, in two. We do load lifting, uh, that means um, uh, operations, uh, that uh, can exploit the maximum take of weight of the machine, uh, namely 170 kilos. These uh, operations uh, that um, are mainly vertical transport from ground zero, let's say, to a high building roof, for example, are uh, typically conducted in visual line of sight that uh, already um, uh, facilitate a lot uh, the um, uh, and the possibility to control the ground area as well, being the mission, uh, uh, let's say, having the mission uh, a limited operational footprint, this is, let's say, this is how we actually can already integrate this kind of service also in more challenging environment, like it could be the urban environment. And then the medium range, the middle mile delivery, also our, um, some of our partners, like Leonardo, were already talking about uh, with some uh, proof of concept for, uh, for uh, Post Italiana. It's, uh, it's very, very interesting. And this is more for the medium range. Of course, these have, prob let's say, more uh, challenges, I would say, in, the, in, um, in terms of um, uh, uh, ground risk and air risk. So we have to cooperate with the other airspace users, of course, and uh, plan the missions in a, in a smart uh, way. Uh, still, in this scope, helicopter, uh, sorry, uh, drones, big drones, <laughs> can uh, can be a good uh, solution that, uh, for uh, alternative to helicopters or cars or boats, surface vehicles, because are are faster and are more um, uh, uh, easier to deploy and. Uh, the last one, so about the uh, client uh, project, as I said, uh, uh, Flying Musket, it's, um, it's already operating and giving uh, services to customers. Uh, we um, uh, focus on uh, energy and telecommunications. Also, we have already clients uh, for forestry applications and already some uh, good contracts with, um, with uh, some telecom um, partners and, uh, and clients. Um, and of course, uh, the um, other proof of com concepts involve uh, logistic services that in the end uh, is the future of urban uh, air mobility. And uh, as, I, as I said, the experimentation, it's, uh, it's a very, very important part uh, for our development. Thank you. Thank you, Federico. Other good news <laughs> in terms of uh, services already available and services that will be available in the near future. So we are speaking about uh, now not the last mile, but uh, ser proximity services uh, in the city. So we are just uh, having a look on the network. And the network of uh, activities is something that uh, is asking from two uh, main aspects, two main enablers. Well, the first one is uh, in the field of uh, uh, services, uh, traffic management services, or so let's say use space. Now, to, to use a, a word that has not been used uh, till now, but has been, uh, let's say, uh, anticipated by the concept of uh, the sandbox that we have uh, heard yesterday and even today. So uh, I will ask Alon uh, from Israel uh, 
to uh, Highlander, it's a company from Israeli, to, to, to give us some uh, point of view and uh, contribution to, the, to, to your uh, company, to this uh, technology, please. Thank you. So um, I think the best way to answer this question is uh, to walk through the um, indie project that's happening in Israel in the last two years. Um, I may say it's a crazy project. Uh, if I'm going back uh, two years ago, um, the CAAI, the Israeli Authority, end of minute. Um, the Israeli Authority is actually uh, said to any startup in the ecosystem, uh, Israeli ecosystem, come, uh, bring your technology, let's uh, break the rules. Um, and I don't know if you ever saw a startup or Israeli startup companies, it's not going to end uh, good. Um, so they start and, and bring a lot of technology and try every day to break the rules. Uh, but when you are talking about aviation, it's not, uh, it's not the right way to do that. So the Israeli Aviation Authority said, OK, let's start from the beginning. Let's build the rules. Um, so we founded uh, in the uh, project that actually responsible to bring US space companies um, or USSPs uh, companies with uh, different operators to work, uh, especially in uh, urban areas. Um, and I'm very proud we are already flying thousands of flights, um, operating uh, daily based and providing uh, commercial uh, uh, or answering commercial needs like delivery, medical delivery. A uh, good example is one of the hospitals in the middle of Israel. We um, changed the way that they are delivering medical um, in areas that in rush hour it will take one hour to deliver it uh, to around for a minute. Um, but I think the best thing is actually to do it daily based and then you are actually understand the maturity and the, the um, challenges that uh, you're probably going to find in the, in the airspace. Uh, we started in specific uh, areas or let's call it uh, sterilic domes uh, that we are allowed to fly and then we um, implement what we call airspace assessment, building the structure of the airspace and bringing it to be to under the, the UTM uh, or US, USSP solutions. Uh, and here you can see the, the process that we are doing, how we started uh, in the suburb and then we enter uh, to the cities like Tel Aviv. Um, then you actually understand the challenges. Then you understand the problem with uh, uh, communication, GPS, um, flying very close to international airports. Um, and, and I think this is the big advantage that we got from, uh, from this kind, uh, kind of project. Um, we can see in the last two years how um, the aviation is changing. I think um, the reason that we are sitting here with companies, telecom companies and Boeing with startups is actually saying that the aviation is changing. Um, it's going to be different in the future. Uh, the unmanned aviation is going to be part of the uh, manned aviation airspace uh, and the change in the airspace actually asking for um, new way to manage the airspace. Uh, so we are taking all the knowledge that we have from the military, from the uh, uh, manned aviation that we know, and bring it to be part of the unmanned aviation uh, today. Here you can see a few examples how we are collaborate with a lot of companies. Um, at the moment we have more than 10 companies, operators that flying daily based. Uh, the target for 2023 is going to be 30 companies, including companies like Kiang, Air, that are doing air mobility. Um, and I think um, this is the answer how we can achieve the goals by collaboration between technologies, um, collaboration and sitting, uh, like uh, the guy from Leonardo said, side by side with um, demand aviation and air traffic management. Uh, and this is what we are trying to achieve in small country like Israel to fly as much as we can, to learn as much as we can, um, and to use technology to solve airspace uh, problem that we know today. Uh, example of uh, collaboration is uh, also uh, with a guy here with a remote identification, and I think this is what we are looking in, uh, in Israel, the ability to bring more technologies uh, to area that we are operating daily base to get more knowledge um, and, and to be more and more mature. Uh, I was very surprised to, to hear someone said I'm in level one of maturity. In Israel, it's not uh, working like that. We are starting from saying we are at level five. Let's see how it's going to work. 
and then we realize that it's not working and building from the beginning. Um, I think this is, uh, this is what we are doing uh, during this project. Now the project definitely more mature and we can see more technologies and, and more companies all over the world coming um, to learn and to build uh, with us. Um, also working side by side with uh, uh, Europe control, following the ASA, the FAA rules. So it's interesting. Yeah, well, of course. Thank you, Alan. It's very interesting the, the number of flights that you have made because it's uh, something very important. In order to gain experience, you have to fly and you have to experience daily, on a daily basis, all the, let's say, imperfections or the, 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 the gaps between uh, uh, operations and things that can happen in order to fix before entering into operation, into commercial operations. So, uh, the, uh, as I said, the uh, traffic management is a, a, a master, is, is a key in order to deploy services specifically on the cities. And the other, the other uh, enabler, fundamental enabler, uh, uh, are for sure infrastructures, because of course we will be very impressed when we will have an aerotaxi, a manned aerotaxi, bringing people from one, one part of the city to another one. But, and in any case, you, you know that you will have a vertiport, or, or what we today is known as vertiport, a place to land and to take off after landing and uh, changing passengers. But also for goods, we need vertiport. Of course, are different. And all these aspects are, let's say, part of the same technological challenge. Then I will ask now uh, Carlo, Carlo Tursi, uh, CEO of Urban V, uh, what is the contribution on the field of uh, infrastructures? Thank you, thank you, Alessandro, thanks everyone. So we've spoken about a lot today, a lot of interesting conversations about the future of mobility. So. Uh, let me allow me to start by coming back to to the present, and so uh, we should have a um, a, a video contribution uh, that that should be able to start. And what I would like to show you is something that already exists today. And okay, I think Let's they need to put the video. Okay, okay. there you go. So so what you see behind me. Is, uh, it's, un, it's not a render, it's a true video, it's a real video, and it's a vertiport. It's a, uh, the first vertiport here in Italy, it's a test vertiport based, located in Rome, right next to Fiumicino Airport. It, is also, it was also the first test vertiport to be inaugurated in Europe, and we did it last month in October, uh, in collaboration with, uh, um, uh, with uh, our uh, partners and shareholders at Aeroporti di Roma, and what you see here is the Video is a video of the first manned flight of an eVTOL in Italy. It took place in the beginning of October together with our partners at uh, Volocopter. And so this, is, this already exists today. And this is uh, what we do at Urban V. We focus on vertiports. Uh, we build infrastructure for advanced air mobility. And so, uh, you know, I, I, I spoke about, uh, the, I started from the present, and now let's, let me move into the future, not into the a very distant future, I'm not talking 2050, 2030 even, uh, but just a couple of years from now. Let's uh, fast forward to uh, fall 2024. That's when uh, we expect, and we are working every day with my team, uh, we expect to allow uh, each, every one of, uh, of us in this room here to come to Rome, to come to one of our vertiports, a real vertiport, not, not, not just a test vertiport, but the one that you see behind me, a real vertiport, board an eVTOL and fly above Rome on an air taxi to your destination vertiport where you will be able to continue your journey to until your final destination. So we are working to make Rome one of the very first cities in the world to have uh, air tax eVTOL air taxi services. So uh, air taxi service uh, with uh, fully electric um, aerial drones. And uh, we are working hard together with our partners at Volocopter to make sure that that can happen by the end of 2024. 
but we are not stopping there, obviously. We are working on developing networks in other cities, not only in the city of Rome, but also in uh, other places in Italy, for example, in the Veneto region, uh, starting from Venice, but going beyond that, in the Emilia-Romagna region, Bologna and beyond, in France, in the Côte d'Azur, Nice, Monaco, Saint-Tropez, Cannes, etc., and, and in a number of places around the world. And, um, and that's, uh, that, that's really what Urban V is, is all about. It's about allowing this, uh, this new form of mobility, integrating it into the, uh, into the texture of our cities and of our urban environments, and um, working together with industrial partners, with regulators, with air traffic management, to, uh, to turn this vision into a reality uh, you know, as quickly as, uh, as possible within you know, obviously the safety constraints that are typical of the aviation, of the aviation industry. So uh, that's us in a nutshell. Thank you very much. Uh, it's very, very interesting that we have very good different points of view on the same subject, how technology uh, have developed now some services and some offers, and how the technology uh, will provide tomorrow other, uh, more mature solutions. Of course, all these will happen and must happen in a regulatory, uh, let's say, scenario when, where the, the regulator has a, a very, very big uh, task to provide regulation in order to allow, not to prohibit, but to allow that things can happen on one side, and the people the, that are involved or the people not involved in the activity are preserved and are safe in their life. So, uh, v thank you very much. I, I will just ask your patients for the five, ten minutes uh, with a second round of questions. Or let's say more, more than this, we have spoken about technology, what is the state of the art today or the day, the, the tomorrow. <laughs> but. Uh, we know that technology, in order to make step forward, in order to mature, to reach a different level of maturity, uh, has to be tested, has to be developed and tested, and again tested. And then you have to test uh, the mix of technologies, because that, it doesn't matter if you uh, have a technology that is mature enough, if you mix it uh, with another technology that has not the same level of maturity, you will fall in, in a very, very big troubles. So you have to, to manage a, a, a global growth, and you have to integrate technologies. So you need, the test is a, a, key, a key message on this. Now we, we have, uh, uh, let's say we have heard yesterday and tomorrow, many, uh, let's say, interventions, or more than one intervention, from the technical ones, uh, about the status of the art in uh, Taranto Grottaglia as a test bed, national test bed, uh, qualified as, as it is from, uh, by the, uh, the Civil Aviation Authority and by the minister in the national plan. So it's something that is the will of the, of the government and the will of the nation to have uh, such a kind of facility uh, available for anyone, not for uh, people living in Puglia, <laughs> available for everyone, Italian one, uh, European one, extra European ones. So it's something that is put at the, at the, at the disposal of the, of the people that need to test. Then we have heard yesterday and even tomorrow, uh, this, um, today uh, from, from uh, the professor uh, about the uh, availability of Bari or the city of Bari to, uh, to be part of the experimentation, part of the test. Of course, we, we, now we are, then we are facing a, a situation in which, in a, in a limited space, limited territory, we have uh, the capability to test uh, all the, uh, the components of, of the uh, uh, value chain uh, fr from drone activities, from testing the platform, from the, the sensors, the integration, the, uh, the profile, the mission, the performances, and then the business cases, or otherwise the, the kind of services in a real urban uh, scenario. So there is something very unique, and I wish to ask you, uh, what is your sentiment about this? Well, how do you feel that this uh, capability that uh, has already shown something, but uh, has a potential to, to offer much more than this? Uh, I will start with uh, um, uh, Laura, please. Yeah, sure. 
Uh, just few words, I, yeah. we just <clears throat> maintain. Uh, my sentiment is that uh, for sure both uh, Grotali Airport as bad and the sandbox we are going to see in uh, Puglia cities are key, let's say, to, to continue. On the maturation plan we're talking about, uh, um, we said we are at uh, level one of maturity in terms of integration, let me say, between the services and the use space in ATM. So if we, really, if we give a look to technologies, uh, for sure the TRL is uh, quite high, um, but what is missing, I think, is really the, uh, the integration with all, all the elements, uh, uh, both of uh, services provider, drone operators, uh, uh, use space service provider, and sure. uh, authorities. So uh, I strongly believe that uh, the Grotalia Airport has that will be really useful to test the, let's say, single technologies and to integrate them, while the sandboxes will be more oriented on the business pre-commercial services. Yeah. Finally, let me say, not only in uh, uh, non-urban areas, but really inside cities, uh, with all the challenges uh, you were describing before, uh, that uh, right now we have uh, tested in controlled areas uh, through NOTAM and uh, through all the diseases, let me say, that we give to the citizen, uh, blocking beaches or area of the cities. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, wonderful. Yeah, I, 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 I fully agree with you. Uh, we have to make an, a, another step through these uh, tools in order to make normal, to bring the, the operation in the normality, in the normal life not as an, an exceptional uh, uh, situation. Uh, if we can, can we continue with, uh, with Alberto, maybe, and then? Uh, well, I, I feel agree with you, with you, Laura, and you, Alessandro. Um, both sides are excellent sites of uh, testing. Um, uh, yesterday, as you know, we made uh, this uh, mission, uh, this transport mission from uh, this area to the port area. <laughs> and uh, one of our first thoughts was, uh, Yes, we need the really uh, urban environment to, to test how this mission can be, uh, this uh, uh, profile, of the profile of the mission can fit uh, in a real urban scenario, because it's very different if you test the very same mission in in rural environment where you might have uh, not all these uh, base stations and uh, telecommunication, uh, um, uh, let's say, uh, points that may disturb your command and control signal. So, all of these uh, uh, matters are really uh, needed to, to, to prove on site and uh, uh, also uh, having this kind of services on, uh, let's say, on a daily basis. On, uh, we, what we need now is to go, to, 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 to go ahead and uh, to have uh, these missions not uh, uh, just for, you say, let's say, for an event, but uh, on, uh, we, we have to collect data and uh, uh, also the 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 um, in your presentation all the uh, what what you have done also in Israel is is really interesting so um, I, I think that uh, a place like this is uh, is is wonderful to test technologies and uh, and also U.S. operations. Okay, and then Federico, what is what is your sentiment on the, yeah, the yes. subject? Absolutely, I agree with uh, with my colleagues. Um, without a proper ecosystem, also as you said, uh, such an advanced and technological organism, let's call it like that, uh, like our drone, cannot thrive. So since we are already in service today, uh, we need uh, all of the help we can get <laughs> from uh, authorities, facilities, Berti ports, uh, UTM providers uh, to scale up the business, to get uh, to th those operational environments like urban, which are more challenging, but more complex uh, operationally, but also interesting uh, from a commercial point of view, of course. Um, of course, uh, we have to distinguish be between testing a prototype that needs a sandbox and, let's like, say, a safe and dedicated environment, which is uh, safe, and testing a service, which is uh, more complex, of course. Uh, we require the standards, uh, guidance material, a lot of things. Uh, without uh, Going too far into the future, I think what uh, we lack and we are we are need. Um, let's say what we can already do today. It's uh, the advanced air mobility initiatives can 
already we see like a good starting point to facilitate uh, communication with local authorities and uh, other uh, airspace users uh, to start a coordination uh, uh, like uh, the so-called uh, UTM, in fact. Okay, thank you. And uh, let's go to a provocation. That just uh, what about a vertiport in in Bari? <laughs> no. Or what is your what, what do you think about this this, this situation to experiment a, a, a urban vertiport? <laughs> First of all, you touch a sensitive touch, uh, subject because I, I should confess that Bari is my hometown. So <laughs> I'm definitely looking forward to bringing, uh, to bringing advanced variable mobility here. But, you know, we definitely we strongly believe in the importance of testing and testing in real life uh, conditions as, as close as possible to real life uh, conditions. The test vertiport that you saw in the video behind me uh, uh, a few minutes ago, uh, I should have mentioned, it is placed within a regulatory sandbox. The first regulatory sandbox for advanced air mobility approved by the Italian Civil Aviation Authority here in Italy. And the flight that you saw was actually a test flight. It was the first of a series of test flights and of tests that we are conducting, both on the ground and in the air. And that we, keep, we will keep conducting throughout mm -hmm. 2023 uh, both on passenger and cargo transport uh, to improve and fine-tune all aspects of, uh, of operations uh, while we get ready for commercial launch in 2024. So having another uh, testbed here in Puglia is a great opportunity and uh, it's a great opportunity for the entire industry to, uh, to learn quickly, to accelerate the pace of uh, uh, transition towards commercial services and, uh, and we do see Puglia, the Puglia region, uh, Bari and the Puglia region in general is a very uh, uh, very ripe market for both uh, passenger transport and for a number of cargo applications that might be carried out by drones, uh, medical services, uh, but, but not only that. So definitely a welcome initiative. Okay, thank, thank you. Um, I'm really uh, interested in, the, in your position, uh, Michael, uh, looking from a different point of view and, and with a different experience from, from the national one. Yeah, thanks. Um, well, I think um, one of the key aspects, and uh, certainly this test site is, can make a large contribution to that, is in establishing the, um, the assurance and uh, guarantees and the safety you know, of, the, of all these new types of operations, new types of, uh, of uh, business concepts. And, uh, and for that, each, it's such a diverse area, advanced air mobility, right? So we have all these different sizes of platforms, uh, different types of operations, short distances, long distances. Each, each we, um, you know, there's uh, the, the risk and performance standards need to be put in place in order to gain that type of assurance. And, and for that, a lot of testing is necessary. We need to gain insight on what, uh, how, um, what are the correct um, risk and performance uh, criteria and also the related like CNS, com communication, navigation, surveillance technologies so that we, have, we can have established that level of assurance and, and guarantees that we need for, for safe operations. And, and so these test sites, you know, this one in particular is they're all uh, critical in order to, to gain those types of insights, I believe, and, um, and, and exchanging our experiences together in order to advance quicker to that, uh, I would say, common, common ground where, we, yeah. where, where we, we feel that these, these operations are safe and profitable, right? So. That's my <laughs> thank you, thank you, Michael. And uh, uh, going back to the uh, even the presentation of uh, the Danish uh, uh, speaker before has shown the, 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 the how complex can be at the center, and uh, how uh, when, how uh, how much uh, economy and how much uh, potential can be b uh, built in a test center in order to facilitate and to put all together all the actors in, or, in order to have a, a real life uh, um, all, all around you when you test and experiment something. And uh, uh, last but not least, I left uh, Alan because you have already made, uh, let's say, a very large test campaign in order to, uh, to reach the level of maturity that you have shown to us. So uh, what is your experience in, in this, uh, yeah, in this I, sense? I, I think um, 
what we found, as I mentioned, is um, that the level of maturity is accelerated very fast when you are active in, in uh, real life, in real uh, um, places, and, and doing uh, commercial uh, flights. There is a big difference between flying in testing field, uh, everything's sterilic, it's okay, you can crash, and then you are jumping to the, to the city. Uh, there is a big difference. I think this is one of the reasons that we are here. Uh, we have a good connection with DTA. We really believe in, in um, projects that we can do in cities uh, with the municipality, with the support of the municipality. Um, and it's very hard to find right now cities that are supporting and saying, okay, come, please um, bring your technology. They are really afraid from the regulation and how the public will, uh, will um, um, see the situation uh, in the city. Uh, I think the citizen is, is um, really want to adapt new technology. Okay, it's look at the beginning, something that they will say, okay, the noise and the privacy. Uh, we found in Israel that they don't, don't interesting about that. Okay, drones are flying, buzzing. Uh, that's it. Um, and, and I think this is the new and the interesting thing that we can do with the municipal, with the regulators, uh, side by side. So um, this is why we believe in, in this sandbox and the potential here. Okay. Thank, thank you very much. A very, very interesting point of view and uh, sharing of experiences is, is uh, something that, uh, let's say, confirm because we, have, we need a confirmation about what we think. And, uh, and, and this confirmation uh, think that coming also from our international, let's say international, uh, or coming from outside Italy, um, the testimonials uh, are really uh, enriched us uh, about, uh, with their experience. So thank, thank you very much. Uh, I think it's time to stop. Thank you to the audience for the, uh, the, the patience and the strength you have shown. Thank you very much. Thank you.